Welcome to the physics place, the place to learn about physics. In this video I'm going to explain how you can draw forces. There's a few basic rules for drawing forces. As you can see here there's two pictures of a guy uh, kicking a ball and when we will draw forces on them you will see that they uh, might look the same but actually they are different. Uh, first uh, when we draw forces we have to start with uh, a starting point, uh, also a uh, detail. In this case uh, we will uh, draw the force of the foot on the ball and uh, you will see that they both start at the same point, so there where the foot is actually having contact with the ball. Uh, secondly, we have to determine the direction. Uh, this ball is uh, having a force that direction and you can see that this direction is going the other way. So already you see that uh, although the pictures are the same, uh, if you look at the forces they will be different, uh, which will have also a different outcome of where the ball will go to. Uh, third thing, you have to determine the magnitude, the length. So if a force is very large, then the arrow which will be drawn uh, will be very large. And if the force is very small, then the arrow will be very small. Uh, and last thing is it needs to be an arrow uh, with a head. So like this. So you have a head here and this is an arrow. If you don't uh, draw this one, then you will probably get minus points. It needs to be an arrow. Now you can see that this force is a lot smaller than this force. So this ball will be kicked to the left and this one will be kicked to the right and this one will go a lot further because it, there was a much bigger force. Uh, and this is, are the rules for drawing forces. So these four steps are very important. I will now give an example how to draw gravity. As you can see here there is a carton box full of milk in this case and we will draw the gravitational force on this one. So we will first start with the uh, starting point, the tail, and it's always uh, when we draw on gravity always in the center of the mass. So in this case somewhere here in the middle. So not in the center of the object but in the center of the mass. And what actually meant by that will be shown in the next uh, example but for now it's like in the middle of the carton box. Uh, then. When drawing gravity, the direction is always towards the center of the Earth, so always down like this. Now we know that this box has a mass of 1.5 kilograms, so we now can determine uh, what the gravitational force is. Uh, like I explained in my previous video, we will use this equation. The gravitational force is the mass times uh, the gravitational constant or the acceler acceleration due to gravity, which in this case will be 9.8. So we do 1.5 kilograms times 9.8 and we now know that the gravitational force on this carton box is 14.7 newtons. Don't forget the unit. Uh, and now we can draw it. Well not exactly because now we have the force in newtons and uh, when we draw something we need a length like in centimeters. Uh, so uh, when we draw something a scale is very important. In this case the scale 1 centimeter equals 2.0 newton. So for every 1 centimeter we draw that equals 2.0 newton. We need to draw 14.7 newton, so now we have to determine how many centimeters the arrow will be, so we divide 14.7 by 2, and we now know that the arrow needs to be 7.35 centimeters downwards, because that's already what we determined here in point 2. So now we can draw the arrow like this, with a head. Now in the next example, the carton box is already a little bit empty, like this. And we have to do all these things again, but look out, the point like the starting point, the center of mass has changed because the mass went down, uh, but also the center of mass, mass, sorry, the center of mass went down. Now it's around here, somewhere like here. The mass went down, it's now 0.8 kilograms, and the center is now somewhere here. Because here, uh, at the top, there's air, and air is very light, so that will not uh, count to the center uh, of ma mass, so that will be a lot lower. Now we can do the same. Um, the direction will be down again because we are drawing gravity. We can now calculate the force. Uh, we use the same equation. Uh, the gravitational force is the mass times the gravitational constant, so times 9.8, 7.8 for newtons. Again, we use the scale, so we divide by 2. And we now know that the arrow needs to be 3.92 centimeters. So you see that this arrow is shorter than this arrow. This means that this force is also lower than this force. Which is of course normal because this pack is already a little bit emptier. Now in the next example, it's almost completely empty. Uh, we now know that the mass is 0.3 kilograms, so it's a lot less. And we first have to determine the starting point. And now we have to be careful because the center of mass is now not here below because that little bit liquid left is not so heavy. So the mass, center of mass actually went up again because now the whole carton box is counting again. Because now this uh, little bit of liquid doesn't count that much, so the whole box counts again as the center of mass. Uh, this can be uh, sometimes very confusing, so you have to look out for it that if we draw gravity, you always start at the center of mass, which usually is in the middle, but not necessarily. Like here, it was a little bit more down. 
Um, so now the direction downwards again. Uh, we can calculate the gravitational force by doing 0 0.3 times 9.8 and we now know that the gravitational force is 2.94 newtons. Divide by 2 because that's the scale. This could be also uh, another scale. It could be 1 centimeter is 2 newtons. It can be uh, 3 newtons. It can be always something different. So always look out for this one. So we divide by 2 and we now know that the arrow will be 1.47 centimeters and we draw it with a head like this. So this is how you draw a gravity of different in different situations. Now I will shortly explain something about scalar and fact factors uh, because that's something that's used now a lot. Uh, if we look at this example we have the mass and we have the gravitational force and uh, like I said in my previous video one of them is a scalar and the other one is a factor and now we can see uh, what the difference is. Uh, a scalar only the magnitude has only a magnitude or a size so uh, like mass it only has a size, the direction is not important. So mass, temperature, speed, um, the direction is not determined by uh, the mass itself, but by the gravitation which is around it. Uh, and that's a factor. So uh, the factor has not only a magnitude, but also a direction, and that's in the arrow. The arrow can go down, it can go left, uh, right, up, it can go everywhere, not the mass, the mass is always just there. But uh, a factor, so in this case the force, uh, it can go uh, everywhere. And in case of gravitational force, it goes down. Now other examples, uh, force, velocity, displacement, uh, in other videos I will uh, tell more about them, but there are also factors. So now we have an example question. Um, we have a box again on the table and we know the mass, it's 750 grams. We have a scale and we have a few questions. First question is determine the starting point of the FG, so of the force, gravitational force. Is it A, B, C or D? So is it one of these dots? Uh, next, determine the direction of FG. Calculate the magnitude and calculate the length of the arrow. And if you've done that, then you can just draw the arrow. So these are all the points which you have to do when drawing a force. Well, right now for yourself, I will now uh, give you the answers. Uh, first, we need to uh, see where it is. The center of mass, well, it's almost completely full. So we look at the liquid, uh, the center of the liquid. So that's the, the red one, so B. Now the direction, as we are drawing the gravitational force, the direction is always downwards. So that's uh, answer to question B. Question C, we have to calculate the magnitude of Fg. And we already got the mass, but we have to look out. It's in grams and we need it in kilograms. So to use this equation, we need the mass in kilograms. So we divide the 750 grams by 1000 to go to kilograms. And that's the amount we will put here into the equation. Uh, G, the uh, gravitational constant uh, 9.8. We do seven, uh, sorry, 0 0.750 times 9.8 and we have 7.35 Newton. So that's the magnitude of the gravitational force. And now we can calculate the length of the arrow because we have the scale here. One centimeter equals 2.4 Newton. Well, we have a little bit more. We have 7.35 Newton. So we divide 7.35 by 2.4. And then we know that we have to draw an arrow of 3.1 centimeters like this. And these are all the steps you have to do when drawing a gravitational force. Besides gravity, there are more forces, like for instance in this car. This car is moving and it's experiencing different forces, like for instance the force forwards, which is in this case 5.88 Newton, and the arrow which has been drawn is 7.0 centimeters. Uh, the tires also have some forces backwards, 1.6 centimeters, and we don't know how large this force is. Just like here, 1.6 centimeters, and we have no idea how large this force is. And finally this one, uh, air resistance, 3.8 centimeters, and we also don't know how large this force is. We know a scale, one centimeter, but we don't know how many newtons that is. So we did get half of it. And the question is, determine the scale and calculate F1, 2 and 3. So this one and these two. And we already have this one. So check if you can do it. Otherwise, I will now give the answer. Uh, first, we have to determine the scale. And we can do that with this information because we know that 588 newtons equals 0, 7.0 centimeters. And we need to know one centimeter. So 0, 0.7.0 centimeters equals 588 newtons, and we need to go to one centimeter. So we divide this one by seven, and we divide the other side also by seven. And then we know that one centimeter equals 84 newtons. So we can put here 84. And now we can determine the other uh, forces. Uh, F1 is 3.8 centimeters, so uh, one centimeter is eight, 84. Newtons, just like here, and we have uh, 3.8 centimeters, and you go there by uh, multiplying by 3.8. So also the other side, multiply by 3.8, and now we have this 319 
newtons. So we know that this one is 319 newtons. Now, for these two, uh, they are the same, 1.6 centimeters. So we will start for F2 and F3. That the one centimeter is 84 newtons. We have to go to 1.6. Well, to go to 1.6, you have to times 1.6. And also the other side, so then we know that this is 134 newtons. So this one is 134 newtons, and this one is 134 newtons. That's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like so I know that I helped you. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.